Yeah, I know where you are. Okay, so what you want to do um, is you want to turn around, okay, follow that road all the way down, uh, turn left, uh, follow that road for a bit, then take your next right, go up the really, really big hill, follow that road all the way around. It's a really twisty road, but it's like one road. Um, and then basically you get to the end of the road and you go around the corner and we will be the house opposite the shop. Yeah, yeah, no worries. About 10 minutes? Cool. I will be here for you. All right, cool. See you then. Bye-bye. Oh, hey guys. Sorry about that. Um, we're waiting for a delivery and the drivers ended up going to the wrong place. There we are. So never mind. He's called me. He's found out where to go now. So hopefully in the next 10 minutes, he'll be here. And you know, that reminds me of today's Bible story. But before we go into today's story, let's maybe have a quick recap of what we talked about last week. There's a man called Jacob. He's got 12 sons. His favourite son is Joseph. We know that because he made him a colourful coat. Joseph had two dreams. His first dream, his brothers were all bales of hay and bowed down to him. His second dream was his mother, his father and all his brothers were the sun, moon and the stars and he was the biggest star and they bowed down to him. He woke up, he told his brother and his father his dreams, they all hated him. That was last week. Now this week, Jacob has sent his ten oldest boys out to the field because they were sheep farmers. So he'd sent the boys out with the flock to go and get some grass to a place called Shechem. Which I'm assuming is a good place to feed your sheep. I'm not a sheep farmer, so I don't really know. <laughs> anyway, so off they go to this place called Shechem. And sometime after that, Jacob calls Joseph and says, Joseph, do me a favour, go down to Shechem, check on your older brothers and the sheep, make sure everything's okay, then come back and let me know what the deal is. So off Joseph goes and Joseph eventually gets to Shechem and he's looking around for his brothers and the flock and he's looking and he's looking and he's looking and he can't find them. And eventually this man comes over and says, yo, Joe, what are you doing? And Joseph's like, oh, I'm looking for my brothers and the sheep. And the man says, oh, they're not here. I overheard them talking earlier on. They've gone to a place called Dothan. So Joseph's like, okay, I'll go to Dothan. So off Joseph goes to Dothan. So there's Joseph's brothers. They're all in Dothan. Maybe some are having a nap. Maybe some are just sitting down. Some are watching the sheep. Some are having a cheese sandwich. I don't know. But they're all sitting around and some of them, they see Joseph come in over the hill. And remember last week we said that when Joseph told them his dreams, they started hating him. Well, they hated him so much that they planned to kill him. But the oldest brother, Reuben, he heard about it. And so he went to his brothers. He's like, look, let's not kill him. After all, he is our little brother. Why don't we just rough him up a bit and we'll throw him down this well by you and then we'll just leave him you, okay? And so that's what they did. As Joseph got closer, they jumped him, they beat him up, they took his multicoloured coat from him and they threw him down the well. And so they're all sitting round again, they're eating their cheese sandwiches and watching the sheep. And off in the distance, one of the brothers called Judah saw some traders, people who were going to somewhere else to sell some things. And as he saw them coming, he said to some of his brothers, what's the point of just leaving him to die in this well? We may as well make some money out of this. So they agreed that what they would do is they would take him out to the well and they would sell him to these traders. Now, Reuben wasn't with them at the time. So he comes back and he looks down the well and he sees that Joseph is gone. Now, the Bible tells us that when Reuben heard the plan to kill Joseph, he changed the plan. He said, let's throw him down the well and leave him there. Because his plan was to have the brothers throw him down the well, leave him there for a bit, and then come back, take him out, and take him home later on. But now, Joseph had disappeared. 
So he goes to his brothers and he says, boys, Joseph is gone. What are we going to do? So the brothers told him what happened. And he's like, what do we do now? We have to go home and tell our father, Jacob, that his favourite son is gone. How are we going to tell him what has happened? So between the ten of them, they came up with a plan. They took Joseph's coat and they found a goat and they killed it. And they dipped Joseph's coat in the blood. Then they ripped the coat up and put slashes and stuff in it. And they took it home to Jacob and they said, we were coming back and on our way we found this coat. And Jacob looks at the coat and realises it was Joseph's coat and Jacob's heart broke. The Bible tells us that he refused to be comforted. He was so heartbroken that his favourite son had been killed by a wild animal. Or at least that's what Jacob believed. But actually, Joseph had been taken to Egypt. And in Egypt, he'd been sold to a man called Potiphar. And next week, we're going to find out what happens to Joseph in Potiphar's house. You know, at the start, we said this was part of the Joseph series, which kind of implies this is a story about Joseph, right? But actually, today's story was more about Joseph's brothers than it was about Joseph himself. And did you notice a couple of things about his brothers? Did you notice that they made a lot of bad decisions? Yeah? Yeah, me too. Wow, you know, during the course of this story, they wanted to kill Joseph, uh, and they sold him, they threw him in a well, they beat him up, they treated him really, really badly. And you know, that's because they were in the wrong place. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but at the start of the story, we said that Jacob, their father, had sent them to a place called Shechem. But actually, they ended up in a place called Dothan. Well, why is that important? Well, firstly, it's important because it's in the Bible. And, you know, sometimes the Bible will say stuff to us and we'll sit there thinking, well, I don't get why that's in there. I mean, that's a bit pointless. It's just a bit like they should have been here, they're over here. Well, who cares? But actually, it's really, really important that we understand why the Bible says certain things. So why is the Bible telling us that they were supposed to be in Shechem, but they ended up in Dothan? Why is that important? And how did it lead to Joseph being sold into Egypt? They knew that if Joseph went home and told Jacob that they were in the wrong place, they were going to be in trouble. And, you know, if they were in the right place, who knows what would have happened? Joseph probably would have shown up. He'd been like, hi, brothers, everything OK? They'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Go away, Joseph. Joseph probably would have gone home, told his father everything was OK. Happy days. But they were in the wrong place. And because they were in the wrong place, they started making bad decisions. They decided it was okay to kill Joseph. Then they decided it would be okay to throw him down a well and just leave him there. And then they decided it was okay to take him and to sell him for money. None of those things are okay. But all of those things happened because they were in the wrong place. And you know, the same is true physically as it is spiritually. You know, in our lives, sometimes we can be in the wrong place. Sometimes we can do things or say things or think things that we know God is not happy with. And those things are called sin. We've talked about sin before, haven't we? And you know, when we sin, God's really not happy. It really upsets God. And just like Jacob's heart was broken when he thought that Joseph was dead. Do you know when we sin, when we do things that make God sad, when we do things that upset God, it breaks God's heart. Do you know that you have the power today to break God's heart? And we do that by sinning. It upsets him, it breaks his heart because he loves us so much, but he doesn't want us to live this life of sin. 
And you know, so often we sin and we do things we shouldn't do or we don't do things we should do because we're not in the right place. So where is the right place spiritually? Where is that? What do you think? Yeah? Excellent. That's right. The right place is with God. You know, during lockdown, it's been really weird, right? Because we haven't been able to see our friends. We haven't been able to see maybe some of our family. Maybe the only way we can talk to people is through like WhatsApp or Zoom or Skype or over the internet or whatever, just on our phones. But that's not the same as being with someone. And it's the same with God. You know, we can know a lot about God and we can watch all the Hope Kids and we can listen to all the Bible stories and we can do all the craft and send in the photos and all that kind of stuff. But that is nothing compared to actually hanging out with God. And sometimes we don't want to hang out with God, do we? Because that's what sin will do. You know, when there's sin in our lives, it makes it feel really hard to hang out with God because we kind of know that we've upset God and we've broken his heart. You know, the great thing about Jesus is all we need to do is go to him and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. That's it. Just tell him you're sorry for all those things that you know have upset God and broken his heart. God promises that he will forgive us. And not only will he forgive us, but he will come and he will hang out with us. And you know, being in the right place with God is firstly saying sorry to God. But it's also keeping up with God. It's talking to God. It's what we call praying. And it's about reading our Bibles and learning more about God. And saying to God, God, I, I don't understand this bit of Bible. Help me to understand it. And you know, it is a great, great life knowing God. There is nothing better but there's also nothing worse than knowing God and being in the wrong place. Okay guys it is the time you have all been waiting for. Are you ready? It is time to get your trusty piece of paper because right here right now making a triumphant return it is craft time. Okay guys, so for craft, you will need our good friend, the piece of paper, a pencil, a pair of snippety snip scissors, some cell tape. Now you may have noticed that I'm using parcel tape and that's because I can't find any other kind of cell tape. You are going to want to use clear tape, don't use parcel tape. And some colouring pens, pencils or crayons. The first thing we want to do is fold this paper in half, like this. Then we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut it in half down the fold. Take one of them and just put it to one side for a couple of minutes. Take the other one. What you want to do is fold it in half and turn it and you want to fold it in half again. You end up with a shape like this. Now take this bit and put this bit to one side for two seconds and bring back your other piece. And we're going to fold it in half this way okay and you'll end up with a long piece like this now what you want to do is you want to color this in okay so get your other piece back as well we're going to color these in and then we'll be right back so now my craft is colored in all i've done as a little bit of extra is i've drawn some brick shapes here to look like bricks you can do that too or you can leave it blank or you can do round shapes or triangle shapes or a bunch of different shapes. You can do unicorns if you want to. It's your craft, go crazy. And I've colored this bit in green because this is going to be our grass. Now we're gonna leave that bit there for two seconds. We're gonna take our wall and we're gonna make sure that the fold is at the top, okay? And we're gonna wind it round like this. Now, 
before we tape this up, we're going to bring back our grass and we're going to put it down like this and make sure there's enough room either side, okay? So there's not enough room for me right now, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Yeah, that looks okay to me. So you want about this much space. Basically, you want about that much room either side of the thing, okay? When you're happy, take it, turn it back over so the fold is at the top, and then tape it down. Tape down this, just the top bit here, and fold it over the top. And then with the folders inside, you want to take a bit of tape and fold it over the inside out as well. And that'll keep it nice and secure. Then we're going to take our grass and we're going to open it up. Okay, so make sure the bit you've coloured is this bit here. Take your well, put it down, and put it as much as you can in the middle. Okay, and then hold it. Don't push down too hard, just hold it in the middle. Get your pencil, and as carefully as you can, without moving this middle bit, just draw around inside. Okay, and when you take it off, you should have a pencil mark. Now, this might get a bit tricky, so you might need an adult to help you with this. Grab your scissors. What we're going to do is don't fold it, but just bend it ever so slightly. And we're going to snip in the middle of this circle, making sure it cuts through to the other side. Then we're going to cut around this circle as best you can, okay? And you should end up with something that looks like this. So when you open it up, you should have a hole in this side with the grass. And all I've done is I got my crayon and I coloured this bit in grey because when you look in the well, it should be dark at the bottom. So that's that. Now, just put this aside again for two seconds. We're going to grab our well. And grab your scissors. And you want to make a couple of little cuts about that big, okay? And you want to do eight all together. When you've done that, turn it over, fold it over, and just bend them back as far as they go. If you need to cut some extra, just cut some extra, but just fold them all back first and see how it goes. Okay, just fold them all out. Fold them all like that. Then pop it down on the table, little gentle squish. And they should all be something like that. Grab your pieces of grass. You open it up and you're going to push this top bit through there. Okay. It might not fit straight away. You might have to bend it. Try not to fold it. But just kind of push it through. And once it's through, it, you should be able to straighten it back out again. Be gentle. Okay. This into this all the way through. Come on, a little push until you get to the bit at the bottom with all the bits you cut out like that. Okay, just stick your fingers in it, give it a little twist. Then you want to get some tape. Again, you want to be using some clear tape. Tape down that side. Tape down this side, and. Tape down this side. And there you have it. Your very own pen, pencil, and art brush. Well, ta da! Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We have had a blast making these videos, so watch out for next week's episode. But until then, do your craft, send us in photos. And we will see you next week for Hopkins Online.
stop looking up there? <laughs> yep. And you know, that reminds me of today's Bible story. Uh... And Joseph's, no, not Joseph, the other one, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> and how did being in the wrong place which is about the size of my finger, um, but that doesn't really help you because you don't have my finger where you're at. And how did it lead to... Ah, Joseph. I always forget his name. This is going to be a very long series if I keep forgetting Joseph's name. And how did it... Ah! What's his name? Joseph. I'm going to write it down. Joseph. Joseph probably would have shown up. You'd have been like, everything okay? And they'd be like, yeah, just go away, leave us alone. You've been an idiot. Bye.